off the road. the traffic, get them to move, wait for the traffic to calm down, then I'm going to move this guy. All right, I can calm down enough here, and grab him by the tail, just slide him back a little bit. Happy about this. I guarantee he's happier than he would be. Whew. All right, I'm gonna put the camera down. Get back to my car. All right, now I'm back in my car, and I do have in the trunk some equipment to deal with this situation. All right, next to the skateboard there. Laundry basket with a towel. That's my proper equipment. But it's around this season that I carry this with me just for such a situation. Now their head can snap back around and go about half the length of their shell. So I wouldn't want to put my thumb too much further up. So just be prepared, it might snap, might not. Okay, now it's easier to handle. Now also, he's got the instinct, he wants to go over there. And even if I take him out of the road and put him back along the side of this road, he's still gonna try to cross it. And I can also see over there, there's a fence. So even though he has the instinct to get over there, he doesn't know that there's a fence there. And he could walk along the perimeter of that fence for days, weeks even. It's just not a safe situation to let him try to achieve that goal. So let's take him home, talk about him for a little bit, learn about him, and then we'll find a more suitable place to relocate this guy, or gal. I don't assume that you're enjoying this ride, but I promise you, you're enjoying this a lot more than getting squished. Hey, hey. All right, now that we're back, uh, I'm Rich Lund, and I am most definitely on a herp quest. I knew that uh, a snapping turtle episode was somewhere in the future. I just didn't know it'd quite turn out like this, that this would be how we'd find one. Now, before we go any further, let me just emphasize this and make it very clear. What I just did, what you just saw me do, that's dangerous. I am in no way recommending that you should do what I just did. I do not advise it. And I also want to be clear that when I saw this turtle at the side of the road, one of the only reasons why I still did what I did was because it had not really started crossing the road yet. Furthermore, I have handled snapping turtles before, of this size and even larger, so I do know how to handle them. And it should also be said, there is no safe way to handle a snapping turtle. There's just safer ways than others, both for yourself and for the turtle. It is a common misconception. Some think that you can just pick them up by their back tail and everything's good. But actually, the weight of the turtle itself can cause major damage to its tail, to the vertebrate, and even to the spine up inside the shell. Especially if that turtle's thrashing around, because it probably isn't going to like being picked up in the first place. Picking it up by the tail is a big no-no. Don't do it. It's during the spring months that the turtles are most active and wandering about, if they're going to be wandering. And this partially has to do with just the activity during breeding seasons. You can have an adult snapping turtle who has lived in the same water territory for years, even decades, suddenly decide it's time to go. For both males and females, this can be just due to environmental pressures. Lack of food and resources, this can be an overcrowding, a larger population of other snapping turtles, or even just other turtles, to where they feel like there's more competitors nearby. You can also have pollution cause this, changes in just the chemistry of the water habitat. Turtle could feel stress and decide it's time to leave. And then when it comes to the mating season as well, 
if uh, males don't sense the female pheromones that they start sending out during the spring, if there's a lack of that, the males might decide it's time to go find some new territory so we can find some new females. The common snapping turtle, as with many turtles in Michigan, it can essentially breed any time that it's awake from hibernation. But most mating takes place in either the spring or the fall, and spring is definitely the one that has more activity. And in the cases of females, if they are gravid, and gravid means having fertilized eggs that are ready to lay, then they are going to go out of the water territory and go find some loose soil, sandy soil, in order to dig out a nest and lay their eggs. They can move sometimes up to a kilometer or even more in order to find such territory. Now with that in mind, let's take a closer look at the distinct features of the common snapping turtle, Chalidra serpentina. And again, there's no safe way to handle a snapping turtle, but when it comes to the safer ways, the back end of the shell is where you can grab it and not risk getting bit. So I'm using the tail here just as some added support and then I'm able to hold on to the back of the shell. Now also my hand is near the hind legs and they have some very powerful legs, both front and hind. And so you wanna hold it in such a way that it's between the tail and the hind leg. But holding back here, then I've got a firm grip in case it does push with its hind leg, I've got a pretty good grip on the tail and so my hand's probably not gonna get moved off of the shell. The biggest risk really isn't to you, it's to the turtle itself. If it starts to move and, and thrash about, the risk is that you could then be startled, you could drop it and let go, and that's when the turtle could very much get hurt falling down to the ground. But they'll actually be pretty calm usually. They are not an aggressive turtle, they just will defend themselves aggressively if you're messing around with them. They are not looking for a confrontation. You can see the carapace is relatively smooth. That's a lot different than like the alligator snapping turtle. The alligator snapping turtle has very much a bumpy carapace, uh, spiky ridged, whereas this one is still relatively smooth and it's got a little bit of like a sawback feature here at the back. Now on the underside of the shell, the plastron, you can see it's a lot reduced compared to what other turtles have. But that's because it doesn't really use just the shell for its defense. It's intimidating, chomping and snapping usually can keep most predators at bay. And having a reduced plastron then allows for a little bit more mobility of the legs, makes moving easier, especially in water. The tail, as you can see, is pretty long. In fact, it's almost the same length as the shell itself. And while we have him or her in this position, this is actually looking like a him. The cloacal opening, where all the business happens, whether that's mating, laying of eggs, or waste evacuation, this is actually further out, just a little bit, further out than where the carapace ends. And that usually means a male. For females, the cloacal opening is usually uh, before where the carapace would end. Now definitely, its jaws are what it's most famous for. And I'm not getting my fingers anywhere near the front of this turtle because they are powerful enough and this is probably a decent size where it would be a risk for them to easily bite pretty deep into a finger and in some cases could even take that finger off. These turtles will eat just about anything. Plant material, uh, they're omnivorous, they definitely will prey upon fish, tadpoles, just about anything that's moving in the water, they will go for. They've been known to be scavengers as well. If the body is freshly deceased and not too much decay has happened, they will eat from it. And so sometimes it has been seen snapping turtles, and other turtles do this too, up near roadkill and munching down on the roadkill. Oh, so cute. It takes quite some time for females to become sexually mature. Can be anywhere from like 11 to roughly 20 years of age. And the mortality rate when they are very young is quite high. First, when it comes to the egg nests, they typically will have a 60 to 100% mortality rate. Whether this be from predators digging them up and eating them, or from just not hatching, that happens sometimes as well. After hatching, the first three years are the most vulnerable for the snapping turtle. While these are just estimates, most sources put the uh, survival rate of the first three years of the coming snapping turtle at around 10% or less, and the first year being the worst of them. Many predators are willing to make a snack out of a young snapping turtle. But if it can make it past the first three years, then the survival rate greatly increases. Some studies putting it at a survival rate of 88 to 97 percent for adult snappers. But because of such high mortality rates at younger ages, and because of how long it takes for them to get to sexual maturity, this is another species that cannot easily recover when a population is decimated. 
it takes a long time. The common snapping turtle is not threatened or endangered. In fact, it's on the list of least concern. But when it comes to local populations, it is very difficult for them to make a comeback. And so local populations can be decimated or even just wiped out due to, again, humans. And this is in the form of development near their habitat, in the form of roads that they end up having to cross to find nesting sites or just because they're getting up and moving. But then also just loss of the habitat because we develop areas of wetlands. And also, when it comes to humans, when we move in nearby, so do the raccoons. Their populations usually go up a little bit because they actually benefit from humans being around. And that just leads to more predation, more finding of the, the nests and the young turtles for them to eat. Their longevity, though, is quite impressive. I checked around at some sources online, I'm not really sure who's correct here, but some say that the longest lived common snapping turtle reached the age of 38 in captivity. Another source said it was 47 years of age. But there's even suggestion that they can go well past that, possibly even up to 100 years or more. Guess there's something to be said about taking it slow. Now, when it comes to relocating this turtle, uh, you know, I didn't help it cross the road. I took it with me so I could have it back here and teach you a few things about it. But now when I put them back, I can't just choose any old place. They have sometimes very stubborn instincts as far as trying to get back to where they're from or even back to where they were going. So I made sure to pay attention to what exit I was at when I picked up my uh, new hitchhiker here. And I looked on Google Maps as to where was a nearby water source it might have been heading. And actually, there's only one that was in that direction. And so I'm going to go now take him to that lake and hopefully that's where it was trying to get to in the first place and won't wander too far from there. And hopefully there's some ladies there as well. Well, all right. Let's get him back where he belongs. I don't know if this is where you wanted to go. But I know that if you kept on going in the same direction, this is where you would have wound up. Assuming, of course, there weren't those farmer fences. Alright, I certainly hope that he likes his new territory. I also feel pretty good, too, about relocating him here because this is not a female. So, it was not trying to go find a place to lay eggs and then try to get back to the original water source. This guy was already trying to find some new territory. So, we'll say goodbye. Thank you very much for being such a cooperative guest. I'm Rich Lund, here to remind you, please, let's leave nature as good or better than we found it. See you next time.